Dito ka dito. Ha? Ko ko Historically, most Niagara stunters have always gone down the falls, but Will Dad, a professional ice climber, is attempting to climb up the dangerous, partially frozen falls. With ice being formed from both the falls and the nest, it's hard for Gad to tell if the ice will hold together. Having never fallen off of a climb so far, Gad cautiously finds his way as he works his way to the top. Several hundred feet below, and more than 150 years earlier, one of the first daredevils worked over the infamous 400 feet deep Niagara Gorge. Blondin, a tightrope walker from France, would span his tightrope 1,100 feet across the gorge at approximately 160 feet high. But he didn't just walk across the tightrope above the gorge. He used a blindfold, a wheelbarrow, and even stopped midway to cook and eat an omelet. Over a hundred years later, Nick Willenda decided to take his Niagara type of walk to a place that Blondin never did to go directly over the falls. Through the mist, wind, and roar of the falls below him, Nick Willenda completed what Blondin had started, but below the type of walkers were another set of animals, those who attempted to ride the falls and survive. In 1901, Annie Taylor, a school teacher, decided she would seek fame and fortune by riding over the falls in a specially built barrel of oak and iron. Two days before going over the falls, she tested the barrel by 
by sending it over with a cat inside. Fortunately, the barrel survived the fall, as did the cat. So, on her 63rd birthday, she climbed into the barrel with her lovely heart-shaped pillow as thousands watched this potential suicidal mission. Riding the turbulent rapids, her barrel makes it over the falls and crashes into the gorge. Rescuers quickly reach her where she is discovered to be alive with only minor injuries. Annie told the press, If it was with my dying breath, I would caution anyone against attempting that feat. In the coming years, stunters came to Niagara to tempt their fate in front of large crowds. Some would survive with only broken bones, while others perished. Each came with their own specially designed barrel, even a six-foot rubber ball. But while other stunters were seeking fame and fortune, a local Greek writer was trying to raise money to fund his books on metaphysical experiments. He even brought along a son, his pet turtle. Unfortunately, his barrel was caught under the falls for almost 20 hours, and he died from apparent suffocation. Sonny, his pet turtle, ended up surviving. Oh, no. Living under the legacy of his father, William Redhill Sr., a local hero and Niagara Whirlpool stunter, William Redhill Jr. decided to brave the falls in 1951, a stunt his father never attempted. He created his vehicle out of large, heavy-duty inner tubes, which he called the Thing. Around 3.30 p.m., the Thing went over the falls. It soon became caught under the pressure of the water. Hundreds of people watched in silence as minutes felt like lifetimes. The Thing finally re-emerged, but broken apart. Red's mother let out a cry for her son. His beaten-up body was found the next morning. Public outcry led to a special order to arrest anyone who tried to go over the falls. Stunting the Niagara had ended. Or did it? Ten years later, African-American Nathan Boya took his 1,200-pound plunging sphere over Niagara. He was then the first to be arrested for not having a permit and fined $100. As a now illegal operation, stunting the Niagara had become less of a public event, but a challenge to beat both the park officials and the falls. Over the next few years, stunters came to Niagara in secret. On multiple occasions, their plans were thwarted by the police, but they just came back again. The allure of the falls was just too tempting. Some stunters, such as Steve Trotter and Dave Monday, ended up going over twice. When stunting the falls alone wasn't dangerous enough, they went over in pairs. With the new law and fines, it wasn't just that the park police were worried about the safety of the stunters, but that it put the rescuers that were there to save them at risk. As the years passed on, the fines continued to increase as an effort to deter other potential stunters. But as the 80s ended and the 90s began, stunters began to try out their weapons besides a barrel. In 1990, Jesse Sharp, who had experience in Class 4 rapids, decided to brave the Niagara Falls in a kayak. He was so confident that he would make it, he even made dinner reservations for later that evening. But when powerhouse operators saw Jesse, they tried to quickly lower the water level to stop him. But he continued to paddle on, making it to the edge and over. His kayak eventually resurfaced, but Jesse's body was never found. Five years later, a stunt school graduate, Robert Oberg, decided to jet ski off the falls and then parachute to safety in hopes of bringing attention to the homeless. He rode his jet ski up the Niagara River through the train rapids and then revved over the falls, fists in the air. Unfortunately, his parachute failed to deploy. His body was eventually found in the water below and he was pronounced dead at Niagara General Hospital. Just when it seemed like stunters had given up on Niagara, 40-year-old Kirk Jones ended up pulling off the most outrageous and lucky ride of the falls. He decided to jump into the river just meters from the falls. Jones flowed through the water as people watched in dismay, thinking it was another suicide attempt. With a reported smile on his face, Jones was quickly whisked over the edge of the falls. On October 20, 2003, he was the first person to intentionally land the falls with no barrel, no life jacket, just in street clothes and survive. With only minor injuries, Jones was able to pull himself onto the rocks below before being rescued. He was fined for his stunt and banned from ever setting foot in Canada again. At 176 feet high and 2,200 feet wide, with 34 million gallons pouring through it every single minute, Niagara Falls is a natural wonder that commands your awe and perks the attention of thrill seekers and daredevils. Whether with barrels, rubber balls, 
street clothes, or other flotation devices, there will always be those who will try to brave the mighty and powerful falls of the night. Thank you. 